Hi guys, it's Angie and Andrew with Reichstags and Confections. Andrew, not quite here yet. Uh, he's going his way home from work, so I'm going to try to get as much of this recorded as I can. Um, for this design team video for Gareth, I have been playing with this stamp set Wild and Free off of the uh, off camera for a while. I've done some different projects for it. I'm trying to get it up here in the camera. Yeah, I have it covered up there with my label on there, but there are some really, really pretty images on here. And some banners. This pheasant is beautiful to use. Uh, some swans. I don't know if I can back this camera up. There we go. And congratulations. For all of us doxy lovers out there, there's a doxy, the paw print, a huge dragonfly, apple, and a couple of cinnamons. It's a, quite a versatile set. And at first, I was like, mm, I had to really scratch my head over like, how in the world am I going to utilize this? And I love this dandelion poof. And today was just one of those days where my brain just kind of went on its own little journey and um, we came up with this little apple ornament or you could use it as a place setting piece um, I'm really thinking about adding a Christmas hook to it for an ornament but, or to sit in a like a bowl for a bowl filler or sit in a basket. You know, there's endless possibilities for the, the little guy. So, I'm going to show you where my brain went. Took a left turn at Albuquerque for those of us who remember Bugs Bunny back in the day. Um, and how I created this. So, without further ado, I'm going to move this guy aside. And try to get myself situated here. That I apologize for the shadows. Again, not back out in the studio yet, so we're trying to make do with the corner that we have. Okay, so what we are going to need out of that wild and free set, and I've already left everything pulled out so I would have it handy, we're going to need the apple. Um, I left the thinking of you sentiment out. I don't know if I'm going to use that one yet or not. I used the leaves and one of the three banners. This is also a project where you're not going to really need any fancy tools other than some scissors, some hot glue, a stamp pad, or block rather. And then I use the um, Spectrum Sparkle pens to just add some deeper coloring and a little bit of shine. And then I grabbed a couple of gray, or gray, oh my gosh, Ange. Colorblind today, green ink. And these little dew drops or the little ink cubes will come in handy for the inking that we're going to do. And of course, I thought I had everything laid out here. And I'm not sure where my red got to that I was using. pull it out of the well, we're going to use another shade of red until I find the right one and our scissors okay so pretty straightforward stamping I just pulled out some red cardstock this is 65 pound cardstock we're going to start with our apple. And you can do this one of two ways. You can ink up the whole thing. I may have to do this in a contrasting color so you can see it on camera better. I'll give it a shot here. Well, that doesn't show up too bad. Okay, so we can do it in, do the whole apple and cut out that image or what I was doing because I really didn't want the seeds in this one 
I took the point of the dewdrop and I just went around the outer perimeter of the apple. You don't always have to use the whole image. And if you want to go ahead and ink the whole thing up, then just take a cloth and wipe the seeds off. And stamp that down. And then that just gives us the outer perimeter. Now there is a little bit of the um, seeds left in there because I didn't clean the stamp off, but that's my fault. My laziness. Okay, so my rag. All right, we're going to need eight of those. So we're going to move this off to the side and. You know, if you want to cut the stem and the leaf, that's fine. For this project, though, it's been much easier for me to just do that part without the stem and whatnot. The bottom, I've been trying to keep the bottom somewhat flat. And we're going to trim up around, just follow either outside the stamp line or to the inside. Whatever you choose to do, just try to make it fairly consistent so that your pieces will line up pretty well. They're not going to be perfect. They are not going to be perfect. Because this isn't a die. This is just hand cutting. No fancy tools. Just scissors. Alright, I'm going to lay that one aside. And then you're going, like I said, you're going to need eight of those. And I have those right here. Now at this point, as I kept the bottom flat, and at the top here, I've notched the top in just a little bit. So I'm going to crease that, not put a real strong fold in it, but I want to bend that right where that V is at. And I'm going to do that with all eight of these, and I'm going to try to keep that V pointing the same direction. Because when you start gluing them together, it comes handy if you can just pick them up and line them up together. Now see, I can see that that one there is really off. So I'm just going to cut that off. No harm, no foul. And if you wanted to ink these at this point, you could ink all your edges. If you want, you could use a pattern paper. Um, I do have my one of my prototypes done here on white, and I will show you that. Oh, good grief, this and I cut, and I don't know which end's which, so we're just going to go with it. Okay. So the white one I have here, I did leave the stem on, and then I cut a second leaf out to back it. But that's with the seeds in it. And I didn't bother coloring it because this was just a prototype to see, is this idea even going to work? Then I went ahead and colored it in. But this and I still use the black ink because again it was just the prototype it was the extra pieces from this but I wanted to see what it would look like with the um, with it colored in and then I used the stems I fussy cut the stems and the leaves out on this one again just a prototype so I'm not looking for precise right there all right now what we're gonna do is grab one of our eight pieces here and it for me I'm right-handed so I'm gonna hold this in my left hand and I'm going to be pinching the bottom half and I'm going to be applying hot glue here to this top piece. And I'm going to glue along that back edge first and then along the front. I started at the back in hopes that till I got this piece up here that the front would still be a little bit melty and if the back solidifies some well that's no big deal. Alright, so you can see this is a little offset here. I'm not going to worry about that. I am going to try to line these outside edges up as best as possible. Um, more so over the middle, because the middle we're going to hide. But I'm going to try to um, line that up as quickly as possible. Okay, one second, guys. Okay, guys, I'm sorry about that. I get sidetracked, and then I forget I didn't turn the camera back on. I thought I did. 
Ah, yeah, yeah. So I still have one piece to go here. So again, what I'm doing, I'm just picking these up and making sure all my tops are going the same direction. I'm gluing this bottom piece, and then I'm lining the next piece up with these outside edges because I'm not worried if the inside lines up. I just want the outside to line up as close as possible. And it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. It's not like every apple out there has the exact same shape. And you could very easily change this up to orange paper and make a pumpkin, brown paper, make an acorn, just maybe a glittery paper and just make like an ornament. Okay, now when we're at the end and we have our eight pieces down, we have this little accordion looking thing in the middle. We're going to put glue on one side. For me, that's going to be the bottom because that's the easiest way for me to line things up. And again, I'm just going to try to line this up from the outside or to the outside. Now it gets a little hinky at this point because there's no give and play in that point, but you just line it up the best you can. Okay, and there's our base. Pretty simple. Now at this point, I took my tweezers these ones that close on their own, almost like hemostats. I took this outside, I held it from the bottom, and I sprayed it with the Scotch liquid glue, liquid spray glue, and then held it over a box and just sprinkled the bejesus out of it with ultra-fine glitter. If you don't want to do that at this point, perfectly fine. can just take the shimmer markers over it, color it, leave it plain, leave it as is. The next piece that we are going to need, and I did it out of green, is our banner. Then if you want any of the extra leaves, um, go ahead and stamp those and fussy cut those out as well. My block's a little small, so I have to put this on at an angle. And I want to keep this kind of tone on tone. I just want it to look a little darker. So I'm going in with the new sprout. If I had some metallic paper in here. I think that would have looked really pretty on there. Mm. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to do this one white too. I'm going to do it on white and I'm going to go darker this time. This is the Cottage Ivy. These banners are a perfect thing to use um, with scraps. There's three different banners in the set, any of which would be perfect for this. I just happened to pull this one off. Better leave that on there so it don't fall. Okay. And at this point, if you're going to stamp like, um, let's go ahead and stamp this thinking of you on here. If the little bugger will stay on the block this time. It needs, my block needs washed. Let's see, we'll do this in the black. And I'm going to go closer to the flag end, or the fishtailed end. should have went lighter um, to stamp on top of that. It would have been much better. I don't know if it'll show up any better on this other one or not. I used a sticker from Kane Company for the Joy because I wanted to use it as a Christmas piece. There we go. 
So there, that gives us two different banners to choose from. But this was the set I used from K and Company. Just a bunch of different words. Okay, so I'm going to fussy cut these out, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay guys, so we are back and we have our banner cut out. And at this point you can ink your edges or whatever you want to do with them. And to start this to make a little banner for in our apple, as soon as find, I'm going to start with the end here. And if you have anything small, a um, sewing needle, a crochet hook, something tiny, um, that you can get a hold of the end of your banner and just slowly start to twist it give it that little bit of a curl and even sometimes if you start to break the fibers of the paper first and get it starting to curl in the direction you want it to go that will help as well it gets a little slippery at first but once you get it to roll over on itself, like that, you're just going to curl it tight. And then once I get it started, then I'll just keep working it back and forth between my fingers, like such, until I get a little curl going there. Now, I have a piece of paper clip and that's what I used in the in the banner and you're just gonna either keep working this back and forth back and forth till it breaks use a toothpick um, whatever you have that's tiny small and you can get down in your put a little bit of hot glue in there stick your pin in whatever you're gonna use and then that gives you your little banner so we have our apple, we have our banner, and I'm not going to take this one outside and glitter it right at the moment. Now the next thing we're going to need is some leaves. Now I have already these already pre-cut. You may have a leaf stamp. Stamp that out and trace it. The leaves that come with the apples are a little more tiny. I mean these are perfect for the half apple that the stamp shows. I just freehand cut and made myself just a couple little cuts here, maybe about an eighth of an inch, just to give myself a little tiny, let's see if I can get that in there, a little tiny tab so that I have something to glue to. And I just freehand cut a leaf shape. Um, by all means, if you need to, just draw one out. So we need that. And I did three of those. Well, now we have four, but that's okay. <clears throat> and I don't know where my stylus got to right at the moment, so I'm going to use the points on my scissors here. And I just scraped a vein down the middle of the leaf. And then I brought a couple off of the edges here. Okay. I think we'll go ahead and use this one. Again, we're just going to come down the middle of the leaf here. Let me pull you guys down. There we go. Well, now that don't want to focus. I'm on camera. Come on. Hopefully that's in focus now. Okay, so I'm going to bring these down. I'm just going to give myself some little veins. And I'll end up using these to kind of manipulate the leaf as well. Spectrum Sparkle 
olive jade pen. Okay. I have a feeling I'm going to have to pause the camera because it sounds like the fur babies are coming back in from pottying. So, okay, there, when you put the, the pen on, then you can see the veins that you... Okay, hold on, guys, I'm going to pause this real quick. Okay, pardon that interruption, but it's time for the puppies to come back in. Okay, so now that we have our leaves all inked up here, and we can see our vein lines, we can, the camera will pick that up. There we go. Where the center vein is, I kind of folded the leaf in half around that. And then where the veins are that are coming out, I just laid my fingernail there and bent that back up over just to give the leaf a tiny bit of dimension and I kind of pinch the ends here a little bit and manipulate them. For me it's kind of like working with fondant for the cakes. Just a little more rigidity here. Okay, so, so we have those. I've done that to all three. And then we can assemble our little apple. We need one more piece. How did I forget that one piece? You can see if I have any scrap laying around here. Let's use this. Right. So I'm going to cut this about three eighths of an inch give or take. And this is just a brown pit pen. And since this is going to be our stem, I don't care that it's streaky. <clears throat> Go around the edges. Now, what we did with the, there we go, that's what I was looking for. The same way we did the twist for our banner. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to coerce this paper to go around the, and curl. I don't know that I can break this much. Girls, please stop. We're having a friendly argument over the food dish. I don't know why they're doing it now unless they know the camera's on because they don't do this any other time. This isn't hard to do, it's just, it's fiddly. By all means, if you just want to cut a straight piece of paper, that works perfectly fine too. I just wanted, since everything else is dimensional, I wanted the stem to stay dimensional as well. And it doesn't help that I have way more here than I need. Looks like a little tiny cinnamon stick. Okay. Alrighty. So now we need our leaves. The sandwich. You know that was going that way. This little tab that I've cut for the leaves. That's what I'm gonna going to attach to that little tiny stem right there. on that seam for the stem as well. And I'm just going to fold this leaf back on itself here. Get this 
next one in and I didn't leave myself much of a tab. I just have a point there. And if you only want two leaves, go with two leaves. What, three, four? I kind of went to, when I did the other one, I was like, eh, two just didn't seem enough. But I think on this one, three was going to be too much. So at this point, you want to add glue to your stem. And you're going to drop it down in the little hole that is left from putting everything together. And then we're going to glue in our banner and like so then we have our pumpkin now I'm not going to go ahead and, and affix everything here just yet because I do want to take it back out and go ahead and apply the glitter to it but I'm not doing that in the house and um, yeah so there you go a few whoops okay that's gonna fall out so there's that version, there's the one with the little leaves coming out from the stamp set itself. Our prototype, well these are both prototypes, um, with the stem, or with the seeds itself still in. You can ink your edges, or the way these are going to end up, we're just going to glitter them. So. Hope that gives you guys some um, ideas on how to look at your stamp sets a little bit differently, and give this one a the 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 the. How about we try that again? Give the wild and free stamp set a check out. Gareth does still have some of them left in his store. Created him with G.com, and he is running. A sale right now I don't remember what the percentage off is with his store closing so grab this set while you can it is a phenomenal well-rounded set that you can use throughout the year so take care guys and we will see you again soon thanks for spending time with us take care bye bye